done by, you see the function will be given to you, that's a force function. Okay, it's a f of x, y, z, the vector field. Will be y minus x squared, z minus y squared, and the x minus z squared. That's a force. Then you need a curve. Okay, this is your curve, the path. The curve is t, t squared. Okay, t pure. And you need the beginning and the end. So the beginning is zero, zero, zero. And at end point, it's gonna be one, one, one. This is, this is the work done. It will be given to you. Okay, you know the formula. It's just a line integral of the vector field over the path at the given time, Fc. Okay, and the definition would end up with f of r of t, okay, dot r prime of t, then dt. You have to find out the value that you're going to have for the t. Okay, you compare this point to find out. See this point, initial point is zero, zero, zero. Compare it with the t, t squared, t cube. That will give you that t is equal to what? T, zero, 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 up to one, one, one. If you compare it over here, so the initial point happen at t equal to the zero. And the end point, you see this is the equation. Replace t by what to get the one, 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 one. Replace the t by what? So your t would be between zero and one. Okay, this is the way you identify what is going to be there. Because you integrate respect to the respect to the t. Any question? Now form this. Exactly, it starts differentiating, finding everything, come back and integrate and you're done. Okay, so we go with our prime of t first. Our prime of t, this is r of t, differentiated, respect to the t. So that gives you one, two t, three t squared. That's our prime of t. Now we have to find f of r of t. f of r of t is going to be f of r of t, the component r, t. t squared, t cubed. So that's going to be f of r of t. So I bring the r of t. You see r of t is a vector, t, t squared, t cubed. Now substitute into the f function. You see this is the f function. So you are going to substitute x equal to t, y equal to the t squared, z equal to the t cubed. So that would be result is equal to the first component y minus t squared, y is t squared. So t squared minus x squared, x is t. So x squared would be t squared. That's first one. Okay, we just substitute here. So the next one, z minus y squared, z is t cubed. t cubed minus y squared. y is t squared. So t squared squared. I give you t to the fourth. Okay, then x minus z squared. x is equal to t minus z squared. z is t cubed. z squared would be t to the sixth. Okay, you simplify if it's possible. So in this case, you get only zero, t cube minus uh, t four, and you get the t minus t six. So that would be f of r of t as a, okay, as a, as a, as a vector. You get these numbers, okay? Now I find the cross product, the dot product, dot product of f of r t and the r prime of t. So get the dot product to, to continue. So this is going to be f of r of t dot r prime of t, two vector. So that's it. I bring it here so that you can see it. r prime is one, two t, three t as well. That's a, sorry, I, it doesn't matter anymore. You know the dot product is commutative, so I can do it. So this is going to be zero, t cubed minus t to the fourth, 
okay, and the t minus t to the t to the six. Okay, get the get the dot product, multiply them together, and go forward. Get these numbers. Let's change it. T one over t over the best number. Okay, so this is going to be the case. Multiply together, and the dot product is going to be equal to, you multiply these two together, one times zero would be zero. Can I write it down so that you know that? Zero, then the two T times the other part, T cubed minus T to the four, plus three T squared times T minus T six. Okay, so that gives you zero, and this is going to be two T to the fourth minus two t to the fifth plus a three t cubed minus three t to the t to the eight. Okay, combine the like terms. There is nothing to be combined. Okay, so this is it. That gives you t to the fourth minus two t to the fifth three t cubed minus three t to the eight. So that is going to be f of rt of prime of t. Now integrate it. So the word would be integral from zero to one, whatever you got over here. The two t to the fourth minus two t to the fifth, okay, plus a three t to the seven, minus three t to the eight, all dt. Is the integral defined? Okay, so the first one would be what? The first one would be t to t to the five over five. Next one would be two t to the six over six, three t to the eight over eight, minus three t to the nine over nine to be evaluated from zero to one. Professor, where's the three t seven coming from? It is outside, that's it, yeah. that's a cure. So that's a cube, so the cube, so it's going to be four, okay? One, two, three, four. So that's a four, and this is four. If you put zero, we get nothing, put the one. So we are going to get the two fifths, the first one. Two fifths minus, uh, and that's a two fifths minus two six. Okay, two six plus uh, three quarter, one minus three now. Okay, so try to find the common denominator and then that gives you the expression. Okay, so it's like a, like a two fifth minus one third plus three quarter, and this is gonna be minus uh, one third again. Okay, you find the common denominator, 50, 60. If you put them together, the final answer would be 29 over 60. So the word would be 29 over 60, the final answer. Thank you. Okay, so it's a straightforward problem. But make sure that it's a dot product. Some people, they miss it when they do the dot product. Yes? Do you remember how you have points and how you find the values for three? You let them equal to each other, you see? This is your path, okay? The path R of T is what? T, T squared, T cubed. So for the beginning, you let everything to be equal to the zero. You find the common solution. The common solution is T equal to the zero. Okay, so it's just plugging in numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, look, make sure to give them a suggestion now. Because this is always the case. They are not going to give you, you know, the value of the T. They give you initial value and then Okay, then put them together, you can do it. Okay, so get practice, and this is it. It's the function is going to be very, very similar. So that is the problem of the work. Any question? Now we go to the next one, the problem of the green theorem. Okay, green theorem. Again, setting up that, okay. Even if you work on it, and you won't get the final answer if you Design the Green's theorem, you get most of the points. Okay, that is going to be not a difficult problem. So number 21, give you the other question we are interested in, Green's theorem. Green's 
here then. This is going to be a closed hat. You want to integrate, so you give it the double integral and you get a domain which is going to be inside of those fence. So that's going to be done. So the integral in question, we are going to give you apply the Green's theorem, so you're not going to miss it. So in this case, you want to find this integral integral over c the top that we may put the close here even if you don't write it down it's the same thing so the function is x minus y cubed okay dx plus uh, x cubed dy this is the function that you want to integrate you need the c c is the circle of the radius two c is this circle x squared plus y squared equals to four. Okay. So it depends how they introduce the, okay, the domain for you. Most of the time it's gonna be circular one. It must be a closed uh, hat. Okay, the circle is this one with the radius of two. So this is gonna be the circle. This is your C. The domain, you are going to pick the point inside. C is the boundary. So that would be your domain. Okay, so your domain is going to be all the points inside, okay, of the of the circle. So your domain is going to be this, all the points, collection of the points inside that circle, inside and on the circle. So that's your domain. So as you get to the double integral, then you decide how we're going to operate this domain. If this domain is going to be anything else, they give you the x and the y. You'll see the restriction for the x and the y. Now, set up the, the, the theorem first. For the Green's theorem, this is what we have. The Green's theorem. Integral of the PDX plus QDY is equal to double integral on the domain of the DR from the U. U is with the Y, but you find the round Q respect to the X. Minus round P. P is with the X, but you go with the Y. Okay, then DA. DA means DX, DY. Depends how we're going to organize it. Okay, so in this problem, identify the P. P is the first part. X minus Y cubed. So from the P, you have to differentiate respect to the Y. So round P, round Y, what's the derivative respect to the Y? Respect to the Y, X is isolated with zero. So derivative of Y cubed would be three Y squared. Okay. So Q, Q is equal to the X cubed. So you have to find the round Q, round X. Respect to the x, that give it three x squared. Okay, so the given integral is going to be equal to you have to find the you have to find this integral now. Okay, by the Green's theorem, that's it. That the integral of you now you can call it i or just if you want to repeat it, you can do that. So this is it. We're going to find the double integral on d, the difference. Round Q, round X is three X squared. Okay, minus three Y squared. Remember this is the negative. And you already got the negative as well over here, so don't miss it. So it's gonna be put the parentheses. So it's gonna be minus, minus negative three Y squared. Then the D, then the DA. Okay, there is a negative sign for the, <coughs> for the formula. And your second part is also negative. <coughs> so it's nicely put x over there. That give it three x squared plus three y squared. Dx. Okay, so you want to find this double integral on a circle. Polar. Polar coordinate would be right there because of the d. So it depends what the d is. If d is a rectangle, of course you change it to the dx dy. See then probably X and the Y would depend on each other. Okay, you have to get the region type one, type two then, the one that you did. But it's gonna be 
this type it's just a polar coordinate with two space. Okay, so we better factor out the factor out the three. Yes. Okay, so that would be R squared. And identify the R and the data. Remember the circle, the radius of the circle is two. So in this case, R is between zero and uh, zero and two. And the data, you are going to use full circle. So the data is between zero and two five. Okay, so, and this is it. So that double integral on D of three times X squared plus Y squared to DA would be changed into double integral zero to two pi for the data, zero to two for the R. We change the function into the R, we said three R squared. But in the case of the polar coordinate, there is an extra R, remember? There's only extra R, DR, D dot. Let's make sure don't miss that extra R, that'd be great. <coughs> okay, so easy integral to find. It's gonna be zero to two pi, zero to two, three R cubed, D R, D dot. Take the respect to the R, so that give you zero to two pi. Okay, uh, it's going to be three R uh, to the fourth over four. That R going from zero to two. When you come back and you do the D data. If you put the zero, we get nothing. But if you put the two, so it's going to be zero to two pi, three times two to the fourth over four, D data, two to the fourth would be 16, 16 over four would be four, four times three would be 12. So it's gonna be zero to two pi, 12 D data. So it's gonna be 12 data from zero to two pi. So if you substitute the two pi, 12 times two pi, 24 pi, the final answer. Okay, so again, it's going to be, it's going to be a nice function. Okay, nice, nice problem. Didn't get there, okay, didn't get there with the polar coordinate. 24, 24, five. Any question? So that's the uh, Green's theorem. Okay, it's going to be the one that you're going to have to do. Straightforward, so it depends on the, the region that you're going to create it. Sometimes you may get the type one and the type two region, okay? Something they give you from a line and a parabola, okay? So now you are going to have the, you just uh, integrating according to the type of the region that we're going to use. Okay, that's question number uh, 21 and uh, topic number two. Any question? Topic number three is going to be independent of the paths somehow, okay? So this is it, there is a line integral involved. So we find out the line integral that we are going to find the ratio of our calculus or the line integral. Number 22. So this is independent, okay, independent paths, you can say. So independent of the paths, okay, a path. So the question is uh, this one. A vector field is given to you. You go with the you know, you know, similar one. It's a f of x, y, z, and uh, this is uh, two x, a negative y squared, and a negative four over one plus z squared. That's a vector field in R three. Of course. You see, in this case, they ask you to, uh, to show that this field is conserved. There are different ways to express this one. Sometimes they give you directly the integral. They say, prove the integral is independent of the paths. It's the same thing. Independent of the paths means the force is in the, okay, it's conservative or otherwise. So in this problem, they break it in two parts for you. The first part, they say, prove that it's, it's conservative. In the second part, they ask for the integral. And we should ask for the integral, okay? So the way we are going to question you is going to be this one. We want you to evaluate, okay? Uh, evaluate uh, 
this integral 2x dx minus y squared dy minus 4 over 1 plus z squared dz. Okay, now look at the C, where C is any pair. C is any pair, even if you don't have one of them. C is going to be any pair between, between these two points, between the points, between the points, A equal to B, zero, 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 and uh, the point B equal to three, three, one. Okay, look at this one. You don't have the equation of a C. C because they say any pair C. Since you don't have the equation of the C, automatically you have to prove that this is independent of the first space yourself. So as soon as you prove it's independent of fats, then the C would be optional. Yes. Once we prove that um, you can use independence of fats, can we just put the values of 0, 0, 0, and 3, 3, 1 into f of f of uh, the vector? Yeah, instead yeah, of having yeah, to find yeah, that's a curve. Yeah, that's, that's a plan. But do we have to find a curve? Or can no. we just do it without finding a curve? No, you, you just explain it. Say that, yeah, you put it, but you have to tell us which curve did you take. That's what we do. Okay, so as soon as you prove it, say, oh, that's it. So I can use any curve, I, I pick a straight line. If you put a straight line, you know that this point is going to be the same thing. So you don't have to do anything. So you are going to find R of, uh, R of 0, 0, 0 would yeah. be 0, 0, 0. And the R of 3, 3, 1 would be just the same thing. And you have to prove that comes, yeah. Okay. So you need potential function. Okay, you need a potential function to find it. Okay, it's uh, uh, the function is a function of three variables. You know that it takes a little bit more time, but it can be done to prove this one. Okay, so the plan for the solution is that you have to prove that f is conserved. Which means you are going to find the potential function. So that's why. You need that potential function for the integral. Okay, start the procedure. So for the potential function, remember this is the way we do it. F sub x, F sub y, F sub z in this case. It's gonna be two dimensional. You just need F x and F y. Uh, it's a three dimensional, so we're going to use uh, all the three. So the component two x and negative y squared, negative four over one plus z squared. Set the component to be equal to the, okay, coordinates uh, equal to each other, system of the equation, and start solving this one. So we get f sub x is equal to the 2x. Okay, f sub y is equal to the negative y squared. And f sub z is equal to negative 4 over 1 plus z squared. That's the system that you have. You start by solving, you know, start by working on one of them <coughs> and you continue, okay? So the first and the second one easy to handle. Okay, so I go with the first one, integral respect to the x. So I go with the first one, so I'm going to integral respect to the x. So the function just simply would be integral of a 2x dx. Integral of a 2x dx is going to be x squared. But there is going to be a constant. But the constant can be a function of y or can be a function of z. Okay, so that would be the part one. Get this one. Then you have to investigate what is that function. Okay? You investigate it with differential respect to the y. We compare it with the number two. That will tell us if there is any y in it. Then we continue. We will compare it with the z. So differentiate respect to the y. X squared would be zero, so that gives you only derivative of a g respect to the y. So it's going to be wrong g on the y. So compare it with the number uh, two that you have. In number two, f of y is equal to the negative y squared. 
They must be equal to each other. So nice D, they are equal to each other. So look at the Y squared. So there is a Y here. So you integrate it to get the G. So what's going to be a G? G of Y and the Z is going to be equal to the integral respect to the Y. Which is going to be negative Y cube over 3, but there may be a Z in it. Okay? Because you have two variables. Mm -hmm. So you go back and substitute your function. So, so far you have, you have f of x, y, z is equal to the x squared minus y cubed over 3 and maybe h of z. So this would be your function so far. Any question? And you have to check to see if there is any z in it. So differentiate respect to the z and use the part 3. Okay, if you differentiate respect to the z, that's going to be fz. fz, there is no z here, no z here, so we're going to be zero, so we get h prime of z. But uh, in the third equation, in the third equation, you do have fz. fz is a negative 4 over 1 plus z as well. They must be equal to each other. So you let them to be equal to each other, so h prime of z would be negative 4 over 1 plus z squared. So there is a z in it. So you have to integrate it to get the h of z. So h of z will be what? It's a negative integral of 4 over 1 plus z squared. You can pull out the 4. That's the integral of the leftovers. Integral of 1 over 1 plus z squared. Not ln. Oh, for like that, an inverse. So that would be negative 4, an inverse, an inverse of z. It's going to be plus z, but plus c that we don't like to use. Okay? So that would be h of z. That's a good problem because you have all of them. Now you are going to add this one to the, your function, so eventually we get the potential function in this format. f of x, y, z is equal to, so they've got the x squared minus y cubed over 3 and h of z is minus 4 and inverse of z. This is the potential function. So this means it's considered. Yes, what question? Last line, negative 4 times inverse of z. Negative 4, I repeat it again. Negative 4 times inverse of z. Okay, so we add it together. Okay, you may have a function of two variables on the test. Okay, but you are ready for it. So this is it. So this would prove that this is independent of bats. So we don't need any bats. That's the easy one. It's going to be just the same thing that they know, but the points and the R would be the same. Yes, sir. Can we, um, can we get a formula sheet on the final? Yes, you can have the formula sheet, yes. Front and back. Yes, but only the formula. I will check it. If there's any example on it, you know, I don't grade your test. Okay, just the formula. Yeah, bring any formula like right. One page, two sided. That's what you need quite a bit, okay? So bring the formulas, yes. Okay, we are not done. So independent of the paths, so we can find it. So you, the indication when they say any C, then you know that, oh, you have to do through this one. The C is not given to it, okay? So we go back and we explain it. We say, oh, that's it. You know how to do it. So F is, yes? Second or so. <laughs> <laughs> You're smoking, man. <laughs> well, I've done this one for more than you. <laughs> can't write that fast. <laughs> no, I want to give you as much as you. <laughs> okay, I got it. Thanks. Okay. So, you know, I post the, the, the actual lecture notes when you see. So, uh, now we are not done. Okay. So this is your argument. Say the integral is integral is uh, 
at independent or independent of that at independent. So you see the given integral that we have, okay, integral of function of what the integral is going to be the integral. Okay, so let me write it down right away. So uh, the integral of uh, dx dx minus uh, y squared dy minus 4 over 1 plus z squared dz. It's simply f of potential y, f of initial point, or the, the, the terminal point minus initial point. It's going to be f of 3, 3, 1 minus f of 0, 0, 0. Okay, so the path independent, you pick the C to be, okay, you pick the C to be where, if you like, C is a line, is a line segment between, okay, between the point uh, that you have, uh, the point uh, zero, 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 and uh, three, three, if it's a straight line, you know, it doesn't matter. Substitute these numbers, you get exactly the same one, the initial point of this. Yes? What would it be called? Just see how to be like a basic curve or something, a simple simple curve? Is it for which one? For this C, like any No, no, it's, a, it's just, you can do with the, any any curve. Any curve. Any curve, but which one can you write the equation? You have, you have two points, you see, you have two matter. points, oh, you have okay. two points. The only curve that we can write with two points is just a straight line. Yeah. Okay. It's like you have the point and the slope. You can write it down that equation, but you don't need it. Yeah. Okay, you have a, you have the point, the initial point, and the slope. You know that the slope is going to be the difference. Since it's zero zero, it's going to be the same thing. So put them together, and you get the result. Okay, go back and find f of three three one and the f of zero zero zero. So we already got the function. Remember, this is the function. What's the one that we did? F of, I have to rewrite it. So this is our suggestion, x squared minus y cubed over three, okay, minus four and inverse of z. Now substitute those numbers that we have. F of zero, zero should be zero. See everything zero. Tangent inverse of zero is also zero. So that would be zero. Put x equal to the zero, y equal to the zero, z equal to the zero. Then uh, you need the other one, f of uh, three, 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 one. x is three, so three squared. y is three, three cube over three, was it three cube, y cube, yes. Minus uh, four, tan inverse of, okay, tan inverse of three. Okay, that's, oh, I'm sorry, what? Because the z is one. That's it, three squared would be nine. Uh, three cubed would be 27 over three would be nine. Minus four times tan inverse of one. I four. Okay, 45 degrees. So these two would cancel out and the final answer would be, and this is gonna be negative five. Okay, that's f of three, 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 one. And uh, you already got f of zero, zero, so there you are. So the integral is going to be, okay, f dx y squared dy minus four over one plus z squared dz. It's simply negative five minus zero. This is the negative five. So that gives you the final, the final answer. Number 22. Yes, the negative five on the solution surface. That's it. You see a straightforward problem we have here. Yes. Will there be any weird formulas that we should write down before the test, like our chance? It's up to you. You can write down any formula you like. But will there be one like that, like our chance? Our chance is just a 
popular function. <laughs> Don't say odd ten. Not correct. Ten and verse. Ten and verse. Why did you say? What what what's a, what's bad about arc ten? Arc ten is not a function. <laughs> Okay, let me go to the arc, arc is classic, you know, it's old fashioned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tell me old. <laughs> no, old fashioned is not really good. Okay, but there is, a, there is a slight difference between the two. Okay, there's a difference. Okay, so get, make it up. Okay, make a note of this interesting problem that you know, we check in the center of class. So the indication is there is no C. So you have to prove that it's independent to be able to be able to do it. Okay, so that is uh, the problem of the independent of the path. So we need to get the Greek theorem independent of the paths. Now uh, we go to the number 24. This is going to be surface integral. These uh, surface integrals are very tricky questions. There is a kind of new substitution that's going to use. There is one point in calculus one that when we teach, you may think that this won't happen. But it's going to be happen all the time for the surface integral. So I'm going to find it so that you can see it in case you get to that part. Yes. So the question. What's the question? Oh, the, the I, I, I so what is your question? <laughs> What is the, I was yelling at you. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 go over chapter 15 and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not the end of 14. Chapter 14 and five sections from chapter 15. That's why. Okay. All the integration. That's it. All the chapter 14. So that question was. Uh, and how do we know that the path is independent? <laughs> the path is independent if the integral between two points, two different integrals are the same. The only time that, see, we are not going to say that path independent. We are going to say that the integral is path independent, okay? Line integral, these integrals depend on the paths. So when we say it's a path independent, means if you want to go to San Diego, you can go from two different directions, 15 and the 5. Okay, in that case, you arrive at San Diego. So it's a path independent. Okay, so the integral is path independent. Integral is path independent if two directions give you the same number. How are we going to find out? If f is conservative, that's it. If f is going to be conservative, then it's a path independent. That gives us the chance to pick the easiest one. The easiest path is a straight line. You don't need, you know, to find any equation, for, you know, et cetera, okay? So let's get to the surface integral. We give you one of them, okay? Be patient, you'll be able to, to get through it, okay? The one that you have. So we have two here, that's a 24, and the, okay, it's a 24 and the 25. The surface integral, let me remind you, surface integral. So, this is uh, going to be, let's do 24. Ooh, surface integral. You see the previous one was a line integral. For the line integral, we need the equation of the line and the curve. We, in question, this is the way we do it, along the curve. Now we are going to travel along a surface. What is the surface? The surface is a graph of a function of two variables. So that function can be a function of x and y, function of y and z, z and x, okay? That would be given to you. But whatever is given to us, okay, so this is the one function and a curve. You see, this is gonna be the double integral over s, f of x, y, z, dx. This is surface integral. The equation I'm going to use. Now, in order to do it, you need the equation of a surface, S. The equation of a surface. We assume that this equation is given to you as Z equal G of X comma Y. Okay, so 
the number. This is a function of two variables, so the graph is surface. If this is going to be the case, you have to find the differential of the surface. Differential is like the, the one that we used for the arc length. So the differential of the surface in this case is going to be the square root of one. That's it. Partial derivative respect to the x alpha g squared. Partial derivative respect to the y squared. So you move this one up here, like the f of rt, r prime of t that you did. This would take care of the r prime of t, but the function to x, y, z. What, what is z? z is g of x, y. That's it. So the surface integral of f of x, y, z, ds over s is going to be the double integral. So that would be f of x, comma, y, you substitute for z. So the function g of x comma y. See now your function is a function of two variables now. When you put them together, there is only x and the y. So times that this the differential that we have, this differential is the square root of one plus g sub x squared plus g sub y squared. So everything inside this integral are going to be the function of x and y. So this is a double going to be double integral over, over what? dA, depends how we're going to write the x and the y. And this is going to be a region, D. What is D? Yeah, those are the bounds given at the beginning. Sorry? The D, is that the bounds given at the beginning? No. Explain no. yourself. <laughs> okay, what is D? You see, surface is in three dimensional. Drop it down in your, as usual, you find a, okay, where? What is D? D is D, X, Y, projection, mesh, projection of the surface, okay, of the surface, S onto X, Y plane, as you did for the double integral before. Remember, previous series, let's say equal to the zero, you put Z equal to zero, we are going to drop it into dimensional. Then you find the, okay, you find it. So D can be what? That can be type one, type two, or most of the time you may be able to do it with the polar pole. Okay, so we are ready for it. So as soon as you, as, you, as soon as you change it to the, the term to the right, it's a double integral. So it can be, if you can be find it by the polar coordinates, we do the polar coordinates, okay? So you set it up first, then most of the time is a, is a polar coordinate. Now, what is the question now here? Uh, the, in this uh, 24, this is the question. They ask you to find this uh, integral, surface integral, z minus x, okay, z minus x, ds over s, the surface. Now, what is the surface? The surface is given to you by this, okay? The surface is the graph of s, is the graph of z equal to the x plus y squared. But the, the, there is a restriction. x is less than y, less than equal to the zero. And y is between zero and one. This would help you to be able, okay, when you want to get the, okay, get that domain of integration, that would be, that would be helpful. Okay, now set up this integral first. You see, the first thing you have to do is the differential of this. So z is given to you, see, this is exactly of the form that I talked about it. So you have to find, so this is it, you are going to call this one. Okay, so the solution is going to be, I suppose, your z equal to the g of x, y. And in this case, it's x plus y squared. Find those partial, partial derivatives. Partial derivative respect to the x, g sub x would be one. Partial derivative respect to the y would be two y. You see the respect to the z would be one. That's why you get the one here, you see? One here because the partial derivative respect to z is one. So uh, this is it, you have to use a differential. If you like, you know, you can, Find it first, then go for it. 
So this is going to be 1 plus uh, gx squared, gy squared. So in this case, you have 1 plus uh, x is 1, so 1 squared, g is 2y squared. So the ds is going to be a square root of 1, 1, 4, y squared. So that gives you 2 plus 4, y squared. Okay, so that would be your ds. I'll go back for the integral. <coughs> so what is going to be the, <coughs> the surface integral? See, this is going to be your surface integral. The surface integral is the function is uh, z minus, OK, z minus x, z minus x dx is equal to double integral on d. You have to substitute for the z. It's x by z. Z is x plus y squared. OK, substitute. It's going to be x plus y squared minus x. OK, so I substitute for the z. Z is given to x plus y squared. Then the ds, what is the ds? ds is the square root of 2 plus 4y squared. Write the dA, then decide which one I'm going to use, dx, ds. Simplify it. These two will cancel out. What's going to be the leftover? Leftover is going to be the double integral on d. OK. And the result is what? y squared, a square root of 2 plus 4 y squared. Okay, four y squared and the and the dA, dA. Now check the check the region. What do you have for the region? You see, this is going to be a graph. If you drop it down into the okay, get the if, if you are going to be in the x y coordinate, in the x y coordinate, this is the situation that you you know you're going to have. Well, x is between uh, 0, OK, the x is between uh, 0 and y, and the y is between 0 and y. So nicely, these portions are already given to you. So what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite it as the double integral. The constant one that comes at the end, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that would be y. x, x is between 0 and y, 0 and y. Now uh, you have the y squared, okay, y squared, a square root of 2 plus 4y squared, okay? So what you are going to do as we write it down, you are going to integrate with respect to the x first, then respect to the, respect to the y. Any question? When you write the double integral, you know that. The constant term uh, is put right at the end. So, this is what I talk about it. This uh, integral that you get, you have to integrate respect to the x, which is easy. This would be constant. So you get one extra x, then from zero to y. Okay? So let me just uh, go on. Check it. Any question? So design it, and at the end, it's going to be type one, type two, or the polar coordinate. It's not the polar, because the region is a triangle. You get this number. Okay, yes. Can you explain uh, which one is constant, which is constant? You see, when you get the double integral, this is your region. So this is a constant that goes at the end. Then because the you know this is depend on the okay, this x is depend on the y. So at the end you must get the number. So that's why you get zero one. Okay. Now integrate. So the integral of this would be just x, but x between 0 and y. So you're going to have an extra y again. So it's equal to okay, integrating respect to the y, and then continue. So it's going to be equal to this. Integral from, uh, OK, integral from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. So whatever you have is just a constant. You see, this is going to be a constant. Because you're integrating respect to the respect to the y, respect to the x, it's a two plus four y squared, which is all constant. But integral of a dx would be just x. 
So it's like one. You can get one respect to the X. But X going from what? X going from zero to one. Then you come back and you integrate respect to the respect to the one. Now if you substitute, that give you an extra Y here. So the result would be zero to one. Y is squared. The square root of two plus four Y is squared times another Y. But the dy. Now the result is <coughs> zero to one. Y cubed. The square root of two plus four Y squared dy. So this would be the resulted resulted integral that I charge by you. Okay, any suggestion? How can I find this integral? Do substitution, yes. So we rewrite it zero to one, y cubed. There is a point about this type of integral that's happened quite a lot. You see, if you want to use u substitution, you call this one u, okay? So let's call it u equal to the four plus, two plus four y squared. Then you need to bring the du. What's going to be du? The derivative of two would be zero, okay? Add the derivative of uh, this one, be a to y. At a to y, dy. We usually, when we go back and substitute, everything would cancel out. We get the u. But what will happen to this one if you go back? Just you see, if you go back, uh, this would be u to the one half. But you have the y cube here. You see, one of the y would disappear because of the y dy. You know, we can find the y, there you go. You see, you find the dy as usual, which is the du over a to y. When you substitute. So when you substitute the dy, you see, this is y cubed. One of the y would cancel out. But there is going to be left over y squared. What are you going to do now? That's it, very good. You are going to write, find the y squared in terms of the u. Because you need only y squared here. Okay, this is, you know, if you remember in calculus one, we did have one problem, integral of the x radical x minus one. That's the famous one. When you take the u to be x minus one, nothing would cancel out, you need the x. So in this surface integral, most of the time, this is gonna be what would happen. But otherwise, you can't do it. You see, you can't do it this one. So what we do is, we are going to find the y square as well. Okay, you can substitute so that you can literally substitute so that we see the difficulty. You see zero y, this is gonna be y cubed. This is gonna be u to the half. This is gonna be dy. dy is du a to y. You see, one uh, y would cancel out. This one eight goes outside. So you end up with what? You end up with the y squared u to the half du. But you have to remove the y squared to be able to integrate it in this case. Okay? So you need to do something about this one. So what we do is we say, oh, u is equal to the two plus four y squared. So I can find the, okay, I can find the y squared. So the y squared would be u minus two over four. Mm -hmm. Now we go back and we substitute. So you have one over eight integral from, uh, sorry, that was zero one. Integral, or just leave it, then you substitute one. Okay, leave it and then that come back substitute. So it's gonna be one eight uh, y mm -hmm. squared. Now I have the y squared, which is u minus two over four, then I have uh, the u to the one half, then the d. Then it is possible now to integrate it. So we pull out the four here, that make it easier, that give you one over 32, integral of u to the half times u minus two du. Distribute it, so that give one over 32, Integral of u to the half times one u to the three halves minus two u to the one half du. 
I'll integrate with respect to the U. That's going to be 1 over 32. Okay, the integral is going to be U to the 3 half plus 1 would be 5 halves. 5 halves minus uh, 2 U to the 3 halves over the 3 halves. Okay, continue, simplify, then come back and just uh, substitute here. What? So that gives you 1 over 32. Use the reciprocal 2 fifths of the U to the 5 half minus 3 half times C U to the 3 half. So this is going to be the final answer. That gives you 1 over 32. I'm sorry, you can, yeah, I just uh, write it down, simplify, then I come back. It's a U to the 5 half. There is a 2 here, you simplify it. That gives you minus 3 U to the 3 halves. So would it be two thirds when you bring it back up? Yes. Right, so then I can, cannot simplify it. Two thirds. So this would be now what? Four thirds. Okay, four thirds. And you can multiply to 32 inside. So this would be what? Uh, 16, 1 over 80. U to the 5 half. Okay, minus, if you multiply these two together, 4 and 32, simplify, that gives 1 over 24. U to the 3 halves. That's it, that was U. U is 2 plus 4 y squared. You can substitute, go from 0 to 1, get the, the final answer. Or uh, the other choice is U is 2 plus 4 y squared. You know that if you replace the y by 0, U would be 2. If you replace y by 1, u would be 6. That would be easier. Find it from uh, 2 to 6. No, it is a calculator. It's not going to be a nice, okay, nice, uh, nice number. Write it down, okay? So the way I got it over here is... Uh, that uh, you can use a calculator to, to get it. Okay, here is the substitute. Yeah, that is one over 60. Okay, a six uh, to the five half minus one over 24. Six to the three halves minus, you have to repeat it. One over 80, two to the five half minus one over 24, two to the three halves, okay. But uh, this is uh, this is rare, but it can happen when you do it. Some of them are straightforward. The one that you can uh, change it into the kind of a follow form. There are uh, some of them. There is one. I'm going to explain that one quickly for you. But uh, otherwise, when it's a scalar valued, most of the time this is the case. Yes. Where did you get the two with first? You see, I just uh, go back and I substitute for the U. Okay. See, Y was between zero and one. Could you use that? You see, Y was between zero and one. If you put the Y equal to the zero, you would be what? Two. If you put Y equal to the one, you would be six. Okay? So that's a kind of a classic format that you're going to have. If you want to simplify it, let me give you another one. That, uh, when it's going to be resulted in kind of circle, semicircle, that the last part would be easier to, to handle, okay? But again, you see the structure of the theorem really, just to, to put them together. And uh, if you get a vector field, then that story of the, that the S part would be different. You see, the, the only difficulty for this type of problem is the z. You see, if I give you the surface to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to 1. You can't do it with this method. But you have to find the z. So it's like calculus 1. If the equation is implicit, then this would be another story, okay, to do it. But the way we do it is just not implicit is explicit. So we'll be able to do it. The only advantage is going to be in our head. Yeah. Right. 
So consequently, it takes much, much more time to be able to do it. Even when we teach it, we usually know in this short form of the test. It takes time. It's quite interesting in general. Okay, let me just uh, give you the other one too. And I'll give you a break if you like. I'll give you a break, five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. <laughs> Come back, we do it. We need to do that for that long time. Another one of the tests you can do. I post the solution of the final review already. Yeah, 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 not finished. Yeah, yeah, so it's not finished. But the rest, I'll show you. Hmm? Yeah, you sent me something, you know. Oh, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, tell you about it. If I didn't do it, email me. What was your email? Huh? Do it again. So I can see it again. Yeah, sure, I got stuff. Yeah, okay, forward. Okay, forward. Forward that will again take a little bit of time. Otherwise, I have to go back and finish the rest. Okay? Yeah, yeah, there is going to be uh, there are, uh, four problems. I post that four problems. Nice. So I've already posted one time already. It was like the solution, it's a part one and the part two. Bring it in. Yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Remember, check it. Remember this? 24. Check to see if one goes there. Oh, up to 23. Okay, uh, yeah, I know that. There is two pages. I post it. I will post it. Yeah, I call it part two. Yeah, then I will send it. Are surface integral literal? Like it's only four. Like if we have the graph of our function very it's like the sky. Or is it just for like the ground? No, no. The surface. The surface is only a solid three. Okay, so it's yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, when you shrink it, see when you put it on the D, you flat it. You are going to bring it in two dimensions. It's like a piece of cake that you have. That piece of cake is in two dimensions. You see, this is in three dimensions. Yeah. But if you drop it down, that would be a rectangle. Rectangle. Yeah. That's what we do. The surface integral will be in that the W. Because that's the way we do it. You see that the double integral of the D. So the D that we did is a triangle now. You see that X equal to the Y is a straight line going passing through the origin. So the one that I did over here, let me change it to the D. This is on the D. This is the line X equal to the Y. Y is between zero and no way, I don't remember any of the work. So we change it to the like how they're exactly checking. Double yeah. integral on the region type one type. Yeah, but I just yeah. I, remember, I remember doing that for the first time. So as I talked about the other day, it's using physics as a rate of change. You have the loy, okay, liquid, etc. That's the way they use it over there. If you want rate of change, is the velocity. If you want to find the rate of change of something through the okay, heat to the body. So this is the way they use it. Somebody asked me the other day what I thought temperature was. I mean, I immediately thought. Um, I thought it really changed. 
You should have said no, but then you can return it to like how you think about temperature, or even if you don't think about how you think about like how it changes the temperature. No, you see, the temperature is a function. The one is a function. So we can different time, I see. So if you want to find what's going to be the temperature in the ocean side, they agree over the years, they know the temperature every day. Then they realize that the temperature will satisfy in one equation. We find that equation. That equation would be model of the temperature. Anytime you want to find the temperature, average temperature in ocean side, you are going to go to that model. In calculus one, we find the average value. The integral of one over p minus a integral from a to d f of x. That's the average temperature. But uh, those, uh, you know, those are all the functions of one way. The surface integral is going to be different in y axis. It's quite a nice thing, you know, but you have to find, you have to know what is that f that you use. What is that represent? It's not that. You are in physics, that would represent the gravity gravitation of x because. So it depends which one of those are is going to be. Let's just say you were doing some general Where? Yeah. 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 Do you need access to the report? Yeah. Yeah. Check out the test. Yeah. 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 That's the best part of the report. It means more than the test. I do it. No, we didn't really take the test. Yeah, mine is right here. Starting my training. In some cases, some colleges, they won't take the test. Should be. I don't even have the X key. Great on the camera. Putting the test three grade on the camera. I've already done that. I've already dropped your lowest test. So there is no test three anymore. Test one and test two. Oh. I think I did I agree. Remember. Let's say no. You didn't drop it, Alex. I didn't drop it. You didn't I'll drop, drop it. it tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the lowest quiz score, too. Oh, wait. The function is x squared, y squared, ds. The ds and the s is okay. S is a hemisphere. So we can okay. It's going to be hemisphere that we can you know we can nicely okay that part of the function that we're going to subsequently going to talk about. Okay, so this is going to be the case when S is a hemisphere. It's going to be upper part of the. Okay, upper hemisphere. Hemisphere. With this equation, z equal to the square root of one minus x squared minus y squared. 
Okay. So again, your function is uh, z is is a radius solved is the form of the g x and y. So we can do it. Okay. So for the solution, uh, uh, this is it. Again, this is the formula: f of x y z d s. The one that we have to provide in this case we have the okay x square y square ds so we have to find the ds uh, so uh, z equal to the g of x comma y and in this case this is one minus x square minus y square we have to find those partials okay respect to the x respect to the y so we change this one into the one minus x square minus y square to the one half. We start differentiating. We want to find the ds. So differentiate respect to the x that gives you g sub x. Chain rule one half times one minus x square minus y square to the negative half times the derivative respect to the x, which is a negative two x. So the two and two will cancel out. So g sub x would be, would be negative x divided by the square root of one minus x square minus y square. So this is the negative half. Okay, we get it done and we write it on the left. Okay, so similarly, gy would be the same. So the g sub y, the derivative respect to the y, just would be negative y. Everything else is the same. So negative y, and that gives you 1 minus x square minus y square. <coughs> so <coughs> you are going to find, remember your ds is the square root of 1 plus g sub x square plus g sub y square. Substitute is going to be the square root of one plus g sub x square. This will be a square. You square the top that gives you x square, <coughs> and you square the bottom one, you lose the radical. One minus x square minus y square. So that's the g's <coughs> x square, g y square, same thing. That give you y square, one minus x square minus y square. Got them together. What's going to be the result? Is going to be. <coughs> I do the you know left it. The common denominator would be one minus x square minus y square. Multiply by one. That give you one minus x square minus y square. <coughs> Plus x squared plus y. Okay. So uh, this is uh, going to be the, the case that we're going to have. <coughs> now simplify the top. These two would cancel out. <coughs> Sorry. The top is going to be just, uh, at the top would be one. So that is going to be one, and this is going to be one minus x square minus y square. So take the square root, that's going to be one. The bottom one would be one minus x square minus y square. So that would give you, okay, that give you your, give you your ds, okay? So that would be the ds. This one, then uh, we go back and we form the okay. We form the, the function, see what would be the, the conclusion that we have. So, bring this subtract so far. Okay, now go back and uh, form the integral. We have the ds, so what's going to be the integral now? <coughs> so the, the double integral over the surface 
it's x squared y squared ds substitute. So it's going to be the double integral of the domain v that we're going to determine. Now uh, you see there is no z, so the function will be exactly as is x squared y squared. Okay, so that gives you x squared y squared and the ds, and this is going to be a ds, one over the square root of one minus x squared minus y squared and the da. Then you decide what are going to do with the da. So the result is the function integral v is this one it's x squared y squared. The denominator is this one, one minus, you better take out the negative sign. So that give you that give you the number. Okay, what is D now? Uh, the Z was a hemisphere. Okay, if you put Z equal to zero, the cross section in the two dimensional would be just a circle. Okay, the circuit would be x plus y, okay, x plus x squared plus y squared equal to the one. Okay. So the, the projection, if you like, the projection of the surface S onto xy is is your d, which is going to be x squared plus y squared equal to okay, equal to what? It's a circle. So look at this expression that we have. So this means in order to find that integral, you have to use the polar coordinate of it, okay? The polar coordinate because D is a circle and then you have some nice uh, nice forms, okay? So I'm going to change it to polar coordinate and D is okay. Any question? So what is going to be the, <coughs> the polar coordinate of this, uh, this integral? So the integral in question is this one. You see you have the x squared, y squared over the square root of one minus uh, x squared plus y squared, da. Now, I forgot to tell you that it's a circle. How are going to, what's going to be the polar form of the circle? Your data is going to be between zero and two pi. <clears throat> and the r is going to be between zero and one. So now this will be changed into what? Double integral. Zero to two pi at the end. Zero to one at the beginning. Change those x and the y into the polar coordinates. The polar coordinates. Remember the x is r cosine. So r cosine is squared. r sine of the data is squared. And the bottom one would be a square root of one minus r squared. Yes. So Rico, can you just uh, explain again how we know that when you project it, it's, it's a circle and not that hemisphere? Hemisphere is in three dimensional. Mm -hmm. When you project it, it's going to be in two dimensional. A sphere in two dimensional is a circle. Okay, because the original one is in three dimension in the space. We're going to you see in the space. Yeah. You imagine, you know, the shadow. Mm -hmm. The shadow on the desk is going to be a circle <coughs> or a semicircle. Okay? So the SPL is easy. We know that we, we end up with the, okay, we end up with the circle. Now, uh, integrating, you remember, you have an extra R, dr, d dot. Now we have to take care of this. So integrated 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. So from the top now, that give you r squared, and that would be r squared. So that give r to the fourth. Cosine of the data, sine of the data. And the bottom one would be one minus r squared. Then this is gonna be r d r d that. Okay. So we continue. It's gonna be zero to two pi. Zero to one, okay. So what's going to be on the top? There is an R and times R to the fourth would be R to the fifth. So the R part would be R to the fifth over the square root of one minus R squared. 
So you have to always go sign up the data, sign up the data, then the DR, do that. Now you have to integrate respect to the R first. So you have to find the integral of, okay, integral of the, of this one, this portion of here. So I'm going to break it, break it out. It's a little bit complicated. Do it as is. You have to find this one. You know that you remove the radical, you substitution, okay. You take care of this integral. You find it, then we go back and we continue. So what's going to be this integral? Zero to one, r squared, one minus r squared, divided to the negative one half, dr. And then you have to do substitution. The difficulty that we did have for the other problem is going to be the same one for this one. Because uh, you take the u to be equal to the one minus r squared, that's a u. So your du would be what? u is a negative 2r dr. But if you go and substitute, it is going to be a leftover. But you have to take care of that leftover. OK, what's going to be that leftover? If you do it? <coughs> one minus uh, r squared is 1 minus u. You see, let me just, yeah, let's, let's substitute to see what would happen to this, OK? So we have the zero to one. We don't want to repeat this one. So when r is equal to the zero, u would be one. And when r is equal to one, u would be zero. So the integral from zero to one, original one, r to the fifth, so one minus r squared to the negative one half dr would be changed into integral from then r is zero, u is one, and u to the zero. Now r to the fifth, we don't have anything for the r to the fifth. So you substitute that from the u to the negative half. You need the dr, sorry, I forgot to put the dr here. So the dr is the du over negative two r. So that gives you du over negative two r. Substitute and simplify. This is going to be this R would cancel out. The left one is going to be R to the fourth. So it is going to be negative one half. Negative one half integral of R to the fourth u to the negative one half du. You see, you have a leftover here. You have R to the fourth. Which one is? You have to go back and find R to the fourth in terms of the. Okay, in terms of the U. Look at this one. So uh, R square would be, is that R square would be one minus U. And you need R to the four. So what's R to the four? Would be one minus U square. See, all these problems of surface integral somehow get to this type of uh, type of ideas. Okay, so you go back and continue. So that gives you negative one half integral of one minus u squared u to the negative one half du. Go back. Okay, you have to extend one minus u squared, then substitute, simplify. And eventually we get the we get the answer. So it's not bad. So it's going to negative one half integral of one minus u squared would be one minus two u plus u squared square of the binomial and u to the negative one half du. Of course, integral is from uh, one to zero. One to zero. One to zero equals one to zero. Okay, now multiply u to the negative one half inside and then continue. Negative one half integral from one to zero. That gives you u to the negative one half minus two u to the power is one minus one half would be positive one half and plus u to the two minus one half would be three halves. 
we had under the Now we can integrate it and then substitute. It's going to be negative one half. Negative one half, there you are. U to the negative one half, U to the one half over one half, minus two, U to the three halves over three halves, plus U to the five halves over five halves. When you're done, you have to find it from one to four. Into the receptacle to take care of this and that's bad. You substitute u0, you get nothing. u1, you just get a simple number. Then you come back and you continue. Okay, so this is it. It's going to be negative one half anchored by 2u to the one half. Which one? Which one? Because this is a negative two u to the three half divided by three half. Yeah, the next one. Then the next one is u to the three half. So it's gonna be x to the five half. Never mind. I'm I'm good. Okay. <laughs> so this is gonna be negative two times the two tails. U to the three halves plus the two fifths. U to the five half. From zero to one. Or from one to You can replace the u by one, find these numbers. Okay? Yes? Can you switch it from? Yes, we switch the value of the u and the r. So it goes from zero to one? That's it, go from one to zero. Okay. Remember, again, you find the, you know, when you substitute, it's like the change of variable parameters. When you substitute, you know, you have to change those as there. Okay, if you replace the y, um, u by zero, you, would, you get nothing. So you are going to have, when you get to u by one, just put these numbers together and simplify it, get the, to get the result. So what's gonna be the result? Yes. So I know you're talking about like a, that like a warping the truth type of thing before, but can you just give me a straight answer? Is this gonna be on the test? <laughs> <laughs> Why? One of them. You said there was way your shorter problem. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it takes time. So. Okay. It's going to be shorter, okay, the one that you're going to see. This is Calc 2, though. Hmm? This is Calc 2. Yeah, you must have put it in Calc 2. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the way you design it. You see, it's unavoidable. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's the advanced moment. Okay, that's fine. So in future, you may have to do it in physics, chemistry. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, that is going to be the case. The one that you have, I think you should be fine to be able to do it. You see, that give you, they show you that how patient you are going to be. <laughs> in future, you got the company, so it's going to be good. <laughs> yes, because it's not the professor. Sorry? You should check the professor. Yes, what's the question? Can you read the question? <laughs> uh, I, well, live is kind of trying to answer it. Shouldn't theta be only going to prime? No. <laughs> <laughs> like that, give you a thing. Honestly, no. Alpha is the same a whole set. Yes, that's the case. See, it doesn't matter. In that case that you're going to have, the data would be between zero and two pi. This would be some numbers, okay? Because the actual one, you know, that you have that hemisphere would be would be the same the same thing, okay? So you want to take care of this one first, okay? So what's the result? If you replace the u by one, okay? So if you replace u by one, uh, if you believe it, uh, that gives you 16 over 15. Over 16, 15. That's because we are not done, okay? You have to just take this one back to the original one. There is a sine, cosine that you have to take care of. Okay, so this is going to be 16 over uh, 15. This is a problem in your book, if you check it. So in the case of the surface integral, I told you, and this is just a scalar value function. 
So if you get a vector value function, then it could be take more, more time. But it's interesting we have to know it, but still fun. Okay. 16 over 15, we go back. And that's it. Okay, so what was the original integral? If you remember it, it was this one. Okay, uh, so the leftover is this. Remember, now it's a zero to two pi. We did the first part. It's going to be a zero to, that was the original one, zero to two pi. I repeat it, zero to one. Okay, zero to one. We have this r to the fifth, square root of one minus r squared dr. And then, then there was the there was a cosine square of the data, sine square of the data, d data. That's the leftover. So uh, this is now is going to be zero to two pi. That integral happened to be sixteen over fifteen. Okay. Then uh, we have to take care of the rest, which is going to be cosine square of the data, sine square of the data. Then d that. Okay? So you are going to have the fun part for this one. Any suggestion? How are we going to find this integral? So probably do some formulas and boil them. Uh, That'd be a lot. Yeah, that would be quite a lot. A lot of work. If you change the sine yeah. square into the 1 minus cosine square, then you'll be in trouble. Just change sine to 1 minus, or change cosine to 1 minus sine squared. <laughs> that, would be, that takes time. The other way to do it is uh, we, we change it to the double angle. Remember, sine of the two data is two sine cosine. That is the quickest way to do it. Okay, so it's going to be 16 over 15. That's a, think about as this one as a cosine sine all the square d data. Remember, I'm going to use this formula sine of the two data. Is two sine of the data, cosine of the data. That's the one that I'm going to use. So this means uh, sine of the data, cosine of the data is one half of the sine of the two data. So this is the way you can substitute. So it's going to be 16 over 15, integral from 0 to 2 pi. So that would be one half of the sine of the two data all square. So the double angle formula was easy to solve. So that's a 16 over 15. One half a square would be a quarter. Okay, that's a quarter sine a square of the two data, d data. So four and 16 would cancel out. That gives you four over 15. Integral from zero to two pi. Sine a square of the two data, d data. Now double angle formula was given. Now that the sine is squared, it was zero to two pi. So it would be one minus cosine of the double angle. That's the two data minus taken to the four data, divided by two d data. So you want to reduce the power, you have to pay for it. <laughs> two data will make a big score. Yes. Can you uh, just move it up a little bit? Yes, the app. <laughs> okay, now uh, again, these two and the four would simplify, so that give you two over 15, integral from zero to two pi, one minus cosine of the four data, d data. Eventually we can find this integral. It's a two over 15, integral would be data, integral of a cosine is sine, minus sine of the four data, divided by four, to be evaluated from zero to two pi. Sine of the two pi, four pi, six pi is zero, sine of the zero is zero, so we can drop the second part. Just find the value of the data, so it's gonna be two over 15 times two pi. Everything else would be zero. So the final answer is four pi 15. Set the signal. Interesting. I don't miss anything to get this uh, this good. Okay, so the one that you have is going to be you know scoring. But you get the idea really. That's the idea that you, this is it. This integral is 
complicated. Not complicated, it's very simple. But uh, the idea, some problems in your code, they just ask you to design the integrals that don't evaluate. That's the fun part is that we just do evaluate. Okay? So if it's happened to be the vector field, uh, you have to change all this product into the dot product. Being three dimensional. Okay, that would be the other story. That's why we are going to have this extension of the Green's theorem, we call it the Stokes theorem. That would make the things easier for us to find this integral. Okay, that's the, okay. that will be the next uh, step. Okay, uh, so these are the, the, the last part of the integral that we have. But uh, otherwise, you go to the review of one by one, the list that I gave you, you just go for it. You see this first one? You missed it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I may give you exactly the same one to see if you can do it this time. <laughs> okay. Or I just change it. So remember, it's not uh, easy. if you want to find, let me just tell you. You see, integral of the exponential function is going to be exponential function, but you have to divide by u prime to get this number. Dividing by u prime, you see, let me just uh, do this one to remind you because it's very bad for me. You see, you see, look at this. Leave exactly the same one as a very similar one. Integral from zero to ln two. Take zero to one, x y e to the x y squared dy dx. See, this is the one you want to do. So you have to integrate respect to the y first. Okay, to get the respect to the y, you see this portion over here. This is like e to the u. Okay, things integrated with respect to the y, x is a constant. So the integral would be the same, e to the x, y squared. But you have to divide it by u prime if you like. So integrate with respect to the y, so the u prime would be 2xy. See, this is how it's happening. 0 to ln 2, 0 to 1. Keep whatever it is. Now, uh, sorry, I just did the integral again. Yeah, I want to integrate it. XY would be as is. This will not change XY squared. But you have to divide by U prime. U prime in this case, respect to the Y. Derivative of respect to the Y would be 2XY. Okay, that gives you 2XY. I differentiated respect to the, okay, so that's it. Then the DX. Okay, so uh, that is exactly as is, 2x, yeah. That is going to be the case. Now you simplify it. These two will cancel out. So you end up with, as it's going to be evaluated from y equal to the 0 to 1. So what's going to be the leftover integral from 0 to ln 2? ln 2, this is just 1 half of e to the xy squared. Y going from zero to one. Substitute, so one half outside, integral from zero to ln two, replace Y by one. So that will be E to the X minus, replace Y by zero, E to the zero, then the DX, DX. So that give you one half, integral from zero to ln two, e to the x minus 1. Now you integrate respect to the x. What's the question? Could you not uh, just ignore the y in the first equation, the x, y? You just replace the y in the exponent? Yeah, yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, you know, there are two different ways to do it. That you call the top to be x, y squared to be u, your prime would be 2 x, y. It's the same thing. Exponential function would be exponential function. Then you divide by your, when, when you differentiate, you multiply by your prime. When you integrate it, you divide by your prime. For this type of, you know, type of problems that you have. Now, integral of e to the x would be just e to the x. Integral of one is x. 
Finding it from zero to ln two. Our substitute is going to be one half. If you put ln two, e to the ln two minus ln two minus, if you put the zero, e to the zero minus zero. So that gives you one half. e to the ln two is just two minus ln two. And it's going to be minus one, e to the zero is one. So multiply the two inside, so that gives you one minus one half ln two minus one half. One minus one half would be one half. So it's going to be simply one half minus one half of the ln two, the final answer. You see, just be careful. Just put your okay. That is going to be the case. Okay, so we give you one of them. As that uh, first question that I identified, that is finding directly there, okay, the double, the double integral. Any question? So I leave it for you there to be yourself. Okay. So those uh, <coughs> 12 parts, I repeat it again. This is it. Just one question from H. Valuation of the double integral, like the one that I just did. Okay, double integral, reversing the order. You see, reversing the order. Number three over here. Check your test. 